The Morning Brew Podcast with Jaffe and Razor, sponsored by Berkshire Bank Home Lending. Where you borrow matters. And welcome into Morning Brew with Jaffe and Razor. Post game, game five is the Boston Bruins lose five to one to the Carolina Hurricanes and now trail in the best of seven series, three games to two. Morning Brew is brought to you as always by Berkshire Bank, but also by our friends over at Tresca in the North End, Fazenda Coffee and the Fazenda Coffee people out of Dedham and Bay State Brewing out of Worcester. We will talk about all of those wonderful people a little bit later in the show. Razor, let's get right to it, man. We're doing this post game right after Nesson post game. This was the kind of game where I think we just, I just felt, you know, after that, the first goal went in. I'm not saying it was over, over then, but for sure the second goal, it just kind of felt like you knew that it wasn't going to be the Bruins' night. And a lot of it had to do probably, I think, with themselves. It, was, it wasn't that the Carolina Hurricanes uh, weren't good. They were very good at times in this game. But I, I don't know. I almost felt like you could see it in the Bruins that they didn't have it. Would you agree? I would agree. Uh, I, I feel like they had really counted on scoring first tonight. They had really, really put all their eggs in that basket. And when it didn't happen in the manner that it didn't happen it, it just it felt like they they realized they were going to have a real tough uphill battle all night and, and it ended up they weren't they weren't really up for it yeah it was like trying to engage that the the the, net, the needed emotional um fortitude like that intensity and it wasn't that the guys weren't trying it just you i think you just know as a player at times just like a, a regular person some days you got it and some days you don't. That doesn't mean you don't put it all on the line. You don't bust your ass. But you just know. And you can tell with certain little things. You can tell with certain battles being won. You can tell when the puck comes to you instead of bounces away from you. And I think the hard thing there, the real, the, to be real about it, is mentally not to allow your head to go to that place of, oh, shit, I don't have it. But eventually, I think you admit it as a player. And you're like, I'm going to try. We're going to see if something can change here. But I just don't know, and, and I just didn't see it from the Bruins in this game. No, no, we, we didn't. Uh, it, it never felt like they were in it, uh, except for a couple opportunities early in the game. It, it just even, you know, you, you really, realistically, I mean, we saw it in Toronto tonight. They came back from 2 nothing after the first period. Um, you, you would expect a massive push in the second period. Right, yeah. that like that's what you expected. That's right. what you needed. It was the it was nothing. It, it was just flat. Carolina just kind of plugged away, chipped it in deep. You couldn't get anything going. And, and typically, we see that brew and push come back, feel like you have a chance, but but there was none of it, and and that's why it ended up five one. And then we saw a plethora of line changes. Yeah. And, and once you start seeing all those line changes and we saw a player get benched for the entire second period. And the other two guys play a minute, right? Right. The other three guys play a minute. So you've got four guys on your forward By unit. By the way, we're talking about Tomasz Nosek got yes. benched for the second period. Uh, Wagner played a little bit more, but Felino only played a minute. Lazar played a minute. Lazar a little, a little over a minute. Bit. So, I mean, it's not you're, you're, that's not a winning formula. Right. That means you're chasing in a monster way. That means the coaches. To your point, it wasn't. I, I it wasn't even the players that didn't. It felt like the coaches recognized that they had no feeling, and they were just blender really just that's absolutely it. putting anything out there just to try and get something to work. Right. The proverbial spark. Let's yeah. see if anything works. And it didn't. All right, let's run through the game like we like to do quickly here on Morning Brew with Jaffe and Razor. Uh, the first six to seven minutes of the game, six minutes, the Bruins were excellent. The Patrice Ber Bergeron, Brad Marchand, David Pasternak line with a bunch of good, legit goal-scoring chances. To, it's, it's, 
not funny to say it, it, it. It's hard to say that a game again is over after six minutes. It wasn't, but these were a defining six minutes when the Bruins couldn't score. Antti Ranta again playing. Um, I don't even want to say. Maybe it. Maybe I. Maybe I'm just not being fair. Maybe he's better than I realize right now. Razor. He's good, and and listen, he's he's very good. He's really well respected around the league. His knock is. He's not always up for playing. He, he, he's an absolute Ferrari. He needs everything to be absolutely perfect to go, uh, unlike uh, a Clydesdale horse that, yeah. that uh, some of these other guys are. And, and that's always been the knock on him. But when he plays, he, he's very good. And that's why he's been valued in this league for as long as he has, despite his random injuries. And, and we're seeing that in this series. We're seeing his in, the, the entire... Auntie Ranta experience in this series, yeah. how good he is in game one. He comes out in game two, has a sore neck in game three, comes back in game four, and then bounce backs with a big one here in game five. So you hope that the Bruins can get into his kitchen a little bit back in Boston. But, but the reality is you're not getting free goals from this guy. You're just not going to get free goals from this guy and this defense core on a normal basis. Yeah. Did the Bruins give Carolina a free goal, so to speak, on the Slavin goal? 6-11 in after there was a good four-check play. Svechnikov pressures Grizzlick. He can't get the puck out. And it's not like Grizz had a ton of time, but I think the hit impacted the the ability of him to, e to elevate the puck, to get more oomph on it, just to get it out. It's kept in at the right point. 15 seconds later or so, I think it was, 18 seconds later, it ends up working its way back over to Slavin, who ends up coming in and beats uh, Swayman with a shot that goes, doesn't beat him, it goes through him. It goes, it goes almost through his right pad. And it was a shot from outside the faceoff dot. So, you know, did you get an easy one, I guess? Or did you give them an easy one if you're the Bruins? You did. You absolutely did. And it was a culmination of, like you said, the giveaway in the zone, the lost coverage in the zone, and then your goaltender not making that save. It goes off of Swayman's pad, hits his knob. He essentially knocks the puck into his own net mm. from a shot to his left side. And, uh, you know, we didn't see that go in for the Bruins early in the game. And if any of the team, either of the teams really needed an easy one early in the game, it was the Boston Bruins. They didn't get it. Carolina does get it. And you feel the energy rise for Carolina. No question. And it's a good building. I mean, I've done, I, I mean, literally probably 50 games, if not more there, mm -hmm. with the amount of time I spent with the Thrashers, same division, the Islanders, a lot, a lot, and then the Bruins and, and NHL Network Racer. I've been there a ton, I mean, beyond. The building over the years has gotten better and better and better. What I mean by better, meaning they understand the game more, they know when to respond, and it's louder. It's loud as shit, actually. It's one of those, and, they, and they blare music. Yeah. I think it almost makes the... TD Garden seemed quiet. Yeah. Um, but anyways, it got crazy after that goal. And I'm sure if it had gone the other way, it, they would have had a bit of sphincteritis. I absolutely believe that. They would have tried to manufacture energy, but they would have been like, oh, shit. All right? But they didn't. And then they scored another one five minutes later. Tony D'Angelo comes in with another long shot for a guy who's not even six foot. He's probably 5'10", maybe 5'11". He's got a hell of a shot. And he bombs away from high, uh, high point, middle point, though. Maybe a bit of a screen in front, maybe. Maybe a little tip, too. Uh, maybe. You, I've watched a bunch. I didn't see a lot. But when you beat a guy from there, you expect something. So, um, but, but either way, it was, that was, again, that's another killer. And it comes off a penalty that we talked about. Probably should have been evened up. But it was one of those they had to keep it one they could not go down nope. to nothing tonight, nope. no matter what and when you give up an early goal then you take a penalty kill your margin's so razor thin that all it takes but is that point shot and and you're, and you're chasing at a monster level you're right i mean again we talked about it on and off air you felt it to nothing it was like duns you know yeah. you know you kept i kept saying to myself just get one and i actually said it out loud if you they just need to get one they just need to get one it never felt like you knew they were going to get one. <laughs> um, I want to talk about the penalty, though, the Derek Forbert with Max Domi. And it's time. We touched on this already on a couple of morning brews here in the playoffs. But I, some of these officials are young. But they're not like two years in the league. The, 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 the type of calls that are being made, and this is not 
this is not a rant against the Bruins per se. Because no, is no, a, no, no. This is a, so. So if you happen to be a non-Bruins fan listening to us, which we appreciate, thank you. Um, but but don't be you know coming back at us and saying ah oh, you're bitching about no I'm not bitching about the refs the refs didn't lose the game for the Bruins here but the refs are lo- with their calls you said this earlier too but I'm going to take it to another thing too they have lost the you know for years and years referees were told just you know call the book and you know the game and the rules but you allowed them to have feel they have lost the feel of the game razor it has been taken away from them or they haven't trained them to have enough feel. Because Max Domi, and Der- what did Derek Forbert get? Two minutes for being five inches taller, eight inches taller, and 40 pounds heavier? It wasn't like he deserved And I would have said the same thing if Domi had gotten the only penalty. I would have been like, holy shit, the Bruins got lucky there. What is going on? I'm rhetorically asking because I don't have an answer. I have no idea. And, and to, you know, to prove the unbiased, I mean, the same thing happened to Leafs tonight. It, the first period, Mark Giordano gets a call behind the net to, to make him that Leafs go down five on three against Tampa Bay at home. It was one of the worst calls. Like, the guy right. slipped. The guy slipped. And I don't, I don't know what the, what the mandate is. but and, and listen, you have to ref the playoffs differently you have to if you want passion and intensity you want all of those things to ramp up then the referees have to ref differently because the game's different you want those scrums after the whistle that's what builds animosity that's what builds intensity and you want Forbert and Domi going at each other a little bit and they calling one of those guys or pers- calling both of those guys to make it four and four does nothing. Let yeah. them let them battle it out. Have them go to the bench, and it's no. And that's what the players want. That's what the right the league should want. We have no personality of the playoffs no, right now. None. It doesn't feel like the playoffs. It, it does not feel like we have five one games all, every night. We have no overtime because there's nineteen penalties called in every game. Right. It's I'm 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 flabbergasted that the league has gotten here, and we're, I guarantee you we're going to see a shift come the second round. And all of a sudden, we're going to say, what the F? Like, yeah. where, where was this in the first round? The first round is the freaking greatest eight matchups of, of hockey that we pine for every year. Yeah. and and, and it's, it's been not- lost this year. There's been one, what, one overtime game? One overtime. Florida-Washington. Yeah. That's yeah. it. There's been one overtime game. And I was talking <clears throat> 32 games. Well, now, well, actually, it's added. 34 games. Only three of those wins, of the 34 wins in the playoffs so far, have had teams scored less than four goals. Four goals and more in 32 of 35 NHL Stanley Cup playoff games. Wow. I don't like that. No, I don't like it either. We've lost the personality that makes the playoffs the best freaking event, especially yeah. the first round. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Off that's the, the rant. It's, All right, sorry. It was um, necessary. It was it's necessary. I am. Nuts. I constantly say this, and I should stop doing it. I'm a fan of the officials. But I'm right now. I am not. Yeah, I am not with the way the game is being officiated for everybody, not just the Carolina for Carolina as well. Yeah, the Bruins got the benefit of the doubt. Now, granted, some of those penalties were well deserved the other day, the high stick, et cetera, the delay of game. But I'm just saying, some of it. It's just so. It's not even ticky tack anymore. It's like manufactured bullshit. Yeah. And like stop it. Yeah. Don't manufacture bullshit. Give us it, our game back. Get, exactly. All right. So it's uh, two nothing end of one. Jarvis scores his second of the series. He's a different player home versus road that we've seen, the youngster. Uh, but this goal goes off of <laughs> Brandon Carlos' stick, off of Jake DeBrus leg, and into the net. Jarvis, the last uh, cane to touch it, so he gets credit for it. But that was a sign, uh, an indication of what the night was like. So 3 nothing through two periods. Jarvis scores again. To make it uh, four nothing. Now he worked his ass off this time to get to the front of the net. Give him credit on that one. You know, Bruins again need to box out. It's a power play goal though that they score. Clifton ends up scoring the only Bruins goal on a nice dart up the ice right side, and then drives middle lane or and it goes what five hole on end. Yeah, it just uh, powers it through. It's like that power. Yeah, on the ice wouldn't take no for an answer. Improved his angle, that type of thing. Kept hey, going. Hey. And I hadn't thought about it until right this second. That's that kind of play where the Bruins need more of that. That's like a play where Ronta's a little scared, a little hesitant yep. to, to really dig in with Clifton driving the net. He's kind of not aggressive. He's a little lackadaisical, wants to pull out a little bit, and that's why that's able to go underneath. Hadn't thought about it until right now. That's well, a 
Bruins need to drive the net, scare this guy a little bit. Well, they He's do need, that, they need to get to they the net, to drive this. the net. They've yeah. got to be in that area. Now, it, listen, Carolina, again, they played long tonight. Yep. Great back check, great re, uh, uh, resets, excellent uh, above the puck, great sticks by their D. All of that said, you got to figure out how to get to the middle more. Mm-hmm. And the Bruins need to do that. Connor Clifton did that off a drive down the right side. And again, uh, skates towards the net, puts it through the five hole. Vinny Trocek ends up getting an empty net goal. Uh, with about three minutes, three and a half minutes left or so as the Bruins pulled the goalie early to try and make something, anything happen. Shots in the game, 38-34 in favor of Carolina. The Bruins actually end up getting the better in the face-off circle, 54-46%. to 46%. The hits, for what they're worth, 45 in fa- uh, for the Bruins, 34 for Carolina. The takeaways, again, how accurate are takeaways? <laughs> takeaways and giveaways, I'm always curious about this. Takeaways, 22-9 to nine in favor of the uh, Carolina Hurricanes. I thought it was more giving away of the puck, but again, I'll give credit to Carolina uh, where credit uh, is due. First period, the Carolina Hurricanes outshot the Bruins 12-8 to for a while, though the Bruins had, what, five or six shots early on. Second period, Carolina took over, to your point, no real push as they outshot the Bruins 15-11. And in the third, it was 15-11 in favor of the Bruins. On the special teams, in this game, the Bruins 0 for 3 on the power play. Carolina 2 for 5. So, well, again, Carolina or the special teams win the game. And the other one that did was like two seconds after. Yeah. Right? The, the, the goal that Carlo put off DeBrusque was like a second and a half after. So Right. So, really, uh, so give big difference. Homes. Can the Bruins now, uh, you know, barf that one out, so to speak? Can they get it out of their system and and – respond I they mean, can yeah they can for game six yeah for sure uh, it, it, we saw that right. we saw it game one we saw it game two we saw them respond three and four um that well, for whatever reason so far in the series and you have to assume that it continues now that we've seen both buildings that the, the matchups are a big deal and, and who guys are playing against and how they're playing and, and these this home ice has really meant something through through five games and so so yes there's they, we could jump ahead to Game Seven, and do we feel comfortable on that? Uh, probably not as much, but but Game Six, we've seen them turn it around from games. We thought they were dead after Game Two, so right uh, there there is that hope that home ice is is really means a lot in this series. It sure does mean a, a shitload in this series, and I'm gonna I'm I'm wondering if uh, the Bruins can muster it up again and, and you know get enough, and I'm wondering if Carolina learned enough. From playing on the road, you know what what are the, what lessons are they going to take being the road team, and uh, how do they make you know d- changes for the better for them? It's going to be again fascinating to see. Uh, talk goaltending quickly here, then we'll talk about our sponsors and some yep. other things. Jeremy Swayman, post game, Bruce Cassidy did not probably would you say call him out? Was that is that a fair way? He he commented, but he didn't call out. Jeremy Swayman, similarly to how he, it felt he did more so after games one and two with Olmark. Would you, is, is that a fair? Assessment? Oh yeah, very, that's very fair. Very fair. That's, that's exactly what happened. He was more sensitive, more thoughtful with cautious. his words, cautious with his words, which, and, and he basically guaranteed Swayman playing game six. He went, like- he went as far with, of, without s- announcing it. In my opinion, um, listening to the the way he spoke and how he talked about Swayman battling and staying with it through the game, and you know, like a timely save on the first one, but the other ones were hard through. Tra- you know, he was very, very positive for a goalie yeah. giving up four goals, especially for Bruce Cassidy's level of you know he's pretty blunt with his goaltenders, and, and he has been for a while. So so he's he's going back with Swayman. There, there's no doubt. In- I'd be shocked if he didn't, given how he responded after Game 5. Yeah. And, and, and again, and cross-referencing that with the Game 2, that Allmark basically played the exact same game that Jeremy Swayman just did. It's basically the same game yeah. that we've seen from Carol- in Carolina from the Bruins goaltenders, all three of them. Mm-hmm. Bad Does puck it- lock, not a great save here and there. You know, like, nothing bad, nothing horrible, but, you know, nothing stolen. Do you do you think it uh, leans towards Swayman as well, uh, if only because now Olmark hasn't played for for three games? Does it even, does that even come into the equation or no? Because Linus has missed time this year too and come back, but playoffs are different. They are different, and and I think it's 
It's not so much the time. I think it's more the fact as well that Swayman won both games at home. So you 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 can also, as a coach, you look at him having the hot hand on home ice. Okay. So I think so too. Yeah. I think he's going to go back to him. We debated it, not debated. We discussed it. Yeah, I was waiting to hear what Cassie said after the game. Yeah. I that, I really wanted to hear which way he was going and and because again, you you can get a lot from his press conference. This is not an easy decision and it, it, like you and I were talking about it too. Like neither of us had a you got to do this, you have to do that. I, I this is not this is a hard decision, mm-hmm. I think, don't you? I do. I do. And this is because you don't have a definitive number one. That's right. And, and this is something new for Bruce Cassidy and, and new for this team and new for this. You always knew who was playing these games, whether it was, you know, going all the way back, all the way back through 2000, you know, into the 90s, into Reggie Lemel and Andy Moog. Like it was Byron Defoe every game, like when I was here in 1999 and 2000. Mm-hmm. And, and most teams are like that. But nowadays you have this back and forth with your two goaltenders that, that you have around it, it is a difficult this is the time when it's very difficult because whatever happens you're going to be second guessed as well after of game course. six well we'll do a little bit of that ourselves coming up in a moment yeah, i want to easy. talk about charlie mcavoy coming back talk about potential of lindholm coming in uh back into the lineup uh and maybe any other lineup changes or alterations uh but first before we do that let's quickly mention the wonderful people that help make Morning Brew with Jaffe and Razor possible. Let's start tonight with Chef Rich and Raymond Bork over at Tresca. Go visit Tresca in the North End and go to trescanorthend.com. Check out their menu. Check out getting a gift card. Look into uh, their hours. Get a reservation. And go visit those guys over there. Tresca has outdoor seating now, just like a lot of the rest of the North End. That began on May 1. They also have a very special Table 77. It's a balcony table. It's for two people overlooking Hanover Street. It's kind of got that old world Italian neighborhood feel to it, if you can sit up there. And you know what else has got a great feel to it? Their food. It feels good to eat it because it is delicious. I love all of their different pastas. But uh, in particular, I'm a veal chop fan. And they've got some great veal chops there. Make sure to go check them out. If you're uh, coming into the North End or next time you're in town, if you're a, a guy or a, cu- a couple or people that's listening to Morning Brew uh, from out of town and you come in, go check out Tresca in the North End and tell uh, Chef Rich. And if Razor, tell them to the guys from Morning Brew with Jaffe and Razor sent you. Also, Fazenda, Fazenda Coffee at fazendacoffee.com. Uh, you can check out all of their f- ground or their whole bean coffees. They have so many different blends. I mean, so many different type of blends, something from light to strong, dark roast. They've got specialty blends. Uh, had a, the morning, a, a, a made a pot of the Mexico, it's called. Had a, a pot of that made up at home. Just fantastic stuff. And they also have the morning brew mugs there. They've got a couple left. Go to fazendacoffee.com slash morning brew razor. All right. Not morning brew razor, but morning brew razor mm-hmm. and spend 45 or more and uh, you get a free morning brew mug. Go check them out again. Fazendacoffee.com. And if you're watching on the YouTube channel tonight, you see that razor and I yeah. are enjoying a little something. Both of us from Bay State Brewing. I've got the mic light. Out tonight. Which one do you got out tonight? Sunshine. The Sunshine. I love it. Bay State Brewing is in Worcester, 112 Harding Street in the Canal District. It's right near the new Woo Sox ballpark and uh, adjacent to a really nice two-sheet hockey rink. They also have a full kitchen with a lot of great food, simple bar food to much more intricate stuff. But the big thing there, their beers. Uh, go check them all out. They've got a lot of different German beers. They've got, like, again, a great, we, they call it a Mike Light. I gotta tell you something. This has got a ton of flavor for a lighter beer. They've got IPAs, New England IPAs, like you're drinking. So many different things. Go check out baystatebrewing.com. And if you're in Worcester, go check them out and have a couple. And again, tell them the guys from Morning Brew with Jaffe and Razor sent you. So thank you to all of our sponsors uh, for this show. Charlie McAvoy. Catches us all off guard. And I guess in hindsight, like nothing should catch you off guard anymore with this COVID shit, right? I no. mean, it, it's, it's, it's really, I mean, I don't say it's make it up as it goes along. That's not fair. But it's like, it's the unknown still. It's like, what's going on, right? All of a sudden, an hour, you know, I'm, I'm coming into the game <laughs> to work and it's like Charlie's playing. Like, what? 
<laughs> okay. Well, I you know, I kept thinking, well, he could test out and be ready for game six for sure. I, I, I guess I should have realized it was possible. Um, but a great moment in, in pregame, at least. A lot of at least what we thought would be extra energy. And, and Charlie brought it, played 25-14, had a couple of shots, four hits. Um, probably wasn't as, as fluid as, as he normally is. But do you, what did you think when you heard that, that he was coming on a private jet to play? <laughs> well, I, I, I thought it was, I mean, it's certainly interesting. I, I thought it was interesting that he tested positive to begin with, with everything. And then to be able to play two games late, like there's a lot of, there's a lot going on here. I don't know the protocols. We tried to figure out the protocols, but I feel like we throw that out to the window. You know, when he was positive, when he had symptoms, yes. there's a lot of, there's, and there's a, a lot of questions there. There so. is, there's a ton of questions. There's more questions now than I think there was even on Sunday. I agree. Um, with, with where everything's at. I, I'm, I'm glad he got out to play. I, I'm, um, I thought he did as best he could you know like he there weren't any real spots where he could make a difference i didn't feel like it, it wasn't like when he was on the ice nothing hey, happened nobody did their thing to this yeah game. yeah yeah no that's nobody that's it. did there was nothing there like there just wasn't anything there there wasn't any opportunities for any of them to to be great because collectively they all needed more so um so again I mean, he played more than everybody else on the ice, and, and that's what he does. He's, he's that kind of a defenseman. I would imagine you know, the Bruins are going to well, they're gonna fly home tomorrow, right? They don't usually fly home after the game because they plan. You never know if you have overtime in the playoffs. So 99% of the time, it's usually the next morning, right, during the playoffs when teams fly home. So it's a short flight. They could come home and maybe practice. I'm going to guess probably take the day off. I, I haven't seen. I don't know. Have you seen an No, I haven't seen, yet? but I would assume. Yeah, unless – uh, you know the Allmark comes in and skates. Pro, you know the oh, few yeah, of these, yeah, yeah, those guys. True. But but it's not. There's not going to be a team practice. No, not at this point. Right. They'll they'll have their pregame skate. So right. So here, I just pulled it up. Uh, no scheduled practice. They're going to have media availability at eleven. Says to me, there's a. My guess is, a nine a.m. flight. My guess. No, I, I bet they go back tonight. You think so? Yeah. I don't. T I've always been with teams that would wait until the next day. They would always schedule because they weren't. They, oh, they, were, they don't want to come back late, late, late. I think. I guess because this is such a close flight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just get even on if go. they went double overtime, they could They'd still come still home. Be home. Everyone can't. would be awake on a double overtime. If you're looking at like a three-hour flight, then you start talking to the sleep doctors. Yeah, but for uh, this one, you're you're not sleep. I mean, they're probably halfway home. Yeah, the, you're right. I, I guess I've been with other places and I yeah. know other teams that usually don't come home regardless okay they're going to come no schedule practice Walmart will probably take some shots yeah maybe Swayman even goes out and yeah. do that yeah Hampus Lindholm I'm saying should be back from everything that all signs point to it now our guess and we talked about this in pregame um it our guess is that it was diagnosed as a concussion because he's been skating now for the last couple of days we haven't heard of any any side effects or any setbacks but you have protocol there too of seven days with a concussion so this would play out to him being out for seven days mm -hmm. and it's probably the smartest thing to do regardless if it's playoffs or not given the hit he took yeah yeah, yeah. The, the head injuries you, you can't mess with so so that and the doctors aren't going to mess with the league's not messing with it the pro that's not getting fudged in any way whatsoever that concussion so it makes sense, and and now the question is, and we talked a lot about this third period end of the game. Is it where is his game at? How confident do you feel to go with six defensemen? All right, let's get into that right now. That's going to segue yeah. into now. Let's talk lineup for Game Seven. We're going to play Coach Cassidy or play Coach, not Bruce, but we'll play Coach here. And this is a hard thing to do, uh, not knowing everybody who's healthy, yeah, etc. But right. assuming people are. Would you lean, would you in general, I'll, you know, you and I will discuss this towards 11 and seven or 12 and six. The fear I have, like I, I would, I, I initially think go 11 and seven because you want to make sure that Lindholm's good. You want to make sure that Charlie responds well. I think he should after having a day off and be back at it again. Again, he seems fine, right? He, he seems great. But the other th reason why I would go 11 and, and seven is I think there's, whether you know, I think Grizzly has struggled. Carlo has struggled at times. Forbert and Clifton really haven't. Riley, we know, can be pretty good, and then can and have a, a a struggle here or there. And I think that seven gives you 
that option, right, to play your top six. On the other hand, seven can really throw off a team. That's something, you know, a, a, it can throw off the rhythm of guys. You got a guy sitting there for a lot, and then you've got a shortened bench, but up front that is, but having your big boys playing more in theory gives them a more of an opportunity to get going. Well, and again, we already talked and touched on the fact that Thomas Nosek played seven minutes in the you entire can't, game you in can't a five-one game. Though, can you? If he's no, healthy? no, you can't sit him. My point is though, you basically played with eleven. You played with minimum eleven forwards tonight, because even the guy like yes. Wagner got to 11, Felino got to 10, but that was only because it was junk time in the third period. The f- score was 4-0. Uh-huh. In the second period, we talked about Felino getting a minute, Nosek not playing a shift, Wagner playing just over a minute, penalty kill time. Lazar, same thing, penalty kill time. So you are basically went down to that short, short forward bench already. And if you're not confident in a Lindholm playing 26 minutes, and you want to platoon him a little bit on the back end, one of those guys isn't going to be in rhythm, to your point, but you can get the guys that are important to you in rhythm on the back end. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, so it, usually I, I'm not an 11-7 guy. This team has never been an 11-7 no, team by any thing. way whatsoever. And, and this defense court, quite honestly, isn't, does, isn't deep enough to be an 11-7 consistently. But it could be something to see, and it'll be telling to how far along Lindholm is if they do go 11-7. and Because, again, back in the day, remember, they used to do 11-7 and a lot whenever you – because you'd be pushing guys like Lindholm back in the lineup a day after getting smoked like that because there's no concussion protocol, but you're also hedging your bet by putting an extra guy out there. It will be very interesting to see which way Bruce Cassidy and his staff go. In this game, Mike Riley played 17-05. Four shots on net, a total of uh, seven attempts, eight attempts. He had three giveaways. He also had four blocks. Meanwhile, Matt Grizzlick played 16 and a half minutes, but he had two minor penalties as well. Uh, no shots on goal and a couple of hits. Assuming Lindholm comes back, you would think it's Riley or Grizzlick that would come out of the lineup yeah. being a left shooter. Uh, and, uh, I mean, you could see the benefits of one or the other, each of them playing or not playing. And that's also what leads me to believe that, I don't know, I mean, maybe you, you know, can you, can you use it to spur the two of them, you know, any, all of them for that matter on. And then you say to posture, not you're going to get double shifted and Martian, you're going to get some double shifting. And if that were the case, I can't see them taking out Tomas Nosek. I just can't. He led them in shorthanded time on ice coming into this game for all forwards. You know, uh, Carlo led on the D side of things. But you're not going to take out Lazar either. I mean, I'm guessing that Felino would be the one that comes out if you did that. I just don't know. I have no vibe on this, no feel if they would go 12, 8, 12 6 or 11 7. Yeah, and, and I, I think. I think that the I think we realistically they they're probably not going to do it only because they haven't done it all season long and it would be a very desperate move. I but it, for the first time it is an option. You know, like what do we say, 60-40, right. 70-30, something like that where yeah. you, you know, you're still going to lean to the 12 forwards, but the Lindholm health and the Lindholm abilities and if there's any concern there, then you you don't want to go down to 4D with what they have right now either. No. That's a big problem. No, you can't do that. Uh, Last thing, we know this. We said it. Everybody, I guarantee all the listeners out there know they need more from certain guys. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, They need more from, you know, Craig Smith. Craig Smith had two more shots in this game. Only played 1245. It was a minus two. I mean, the plus minus whatever stuff. But they need more from him, man. He needs to come through for him. Um, Charlie Coyle. This would be a big game. He's been pretty good in certain ways. Um, you know, he's been good. Um, they need to he, get him on. They you need know, to like, get him scoring. When though. he went 19, he was scoring. Right. He was scoring. Right. You know? Howla. Yeah. I know he got an assist tonight, yeah. but, you know, I mean, after everything he did, the end of the regular season, the last whatever it was, 18, 20, whatever, 18 points in 18 games for one stretch, they need him to come through. I got to imagine that they go back to Bergeron, Marchand, Pasta. We know that. The question is, do you go back to the, do you, you know, do you go back to a line of Hall, Haula, and do you put DeBrusco over there? 
Uh, do you put Smith up there? I don't know. I mean, do you consider bringing Trent Frederick back into the lineup if you go, if you go twelve and six and and reunite that third line? That third line is that even an option right now or no? Given that Frederick hasn't been, um, you know, he wasn't great early on in the series and he hasn't been playing. There's a lot of question marks. No, there's there's game. a ton. There's a lot of decisions for 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 the coaching staff in, in the next twenty four hours. A lot. Yeah, and we won't know it probably until Thursday because no yeah. skate. No practice on I'm not going to give you much tomorrow morning. No, no. Um, all right, anything else we need to cut, touch on? No, must win. Backs against the walls, all the cliches. This team's been here before. Yeah. The group has. They, the, the, core the, core, has. the core has been there. Goalies need, to make, goalies need to steal one. I think the goalies need to steal one here. Yeah. Right? Game six or seven, they're going to have to. You better believe that Carolina is going to be coming out. I mean, they – Everybody thought they. I thought they were going to come out flying, and meanwhile, it was the Bruins. Carolina yeah. is going to come out flying high in this one, and we mm -hmm. saw that games three and four. The difference is that the Bruins were able to handle it for the most part. Yeah, they gave up one goal, but otherwise, they handled it. Mm -hmm. There wasn't that concern. We need to see that same type of calm and response from the Bruins uh, in this game. And you know what? It'd be nice if they scored first. <laughs> All right, that'll wrap up this morning, Brew Chaffee and Razor. Thank you to everybody for listening. We greatly appreciate you taking the time to uh, regularly join us as we talk about the Boston Bruins. Thank you to Bay State Brewing, Tresca North End, uh, and to Fazenda Coffee. We appreciate everything they do. All right, game six coming up Thursday. Razor and I will come to you after that game. In the meantime, try and enjoy a day off, and maybe it calls for a couple of different types of brews, but uh, enjoy your coffee and enjoy your nightly one too.